Now, I'm excited for a couple of reasons. Firstly, I'm getting to play with the interior and make it feel more warm and cosy and like a home on wheels rather than a grotty old ambulance. But also, because I don't really have to do a lot of masking up, because let's be honest, nobody likes the prep work when it comes to painting. I've got one bit of masking tape here, but because I can take the wood off for the ceiling, I can actually get the paint everywhere, be quite rough and crude with it, and then put the trim on afterwards, and it will look perfect. I don't want it too thick, because I want to be able to see some of that wood grain coming through. And that is why I'm using this milk paint. Oh yes. This is genuinely quite exciting. It's the first time it's felt like it might be a camper van. Now normally I'd want to keep rolling each plank all the way through to the end, but I can stop there because that's where the bed frame goes and that will cover that joint nicely. Tongue and groove looks lovely, but it's a right faff. So satisfying. Ta-da! That looks quite nice, actually. Let's get some wax on there. Now, not only does this look prettier, but it also nourishes the wood, so it should keep it better for longer. So much better, look at the difference. Because in reality, I have used the cheapest wood I could get my hands on, which is naturally pine. But I think once it's waxed and it's a bit darker, it could pass as a hardwood. It looks a lot more classy. Now that looks 10 times better. I think. But it's a lot of work and I've got about 100 pieces of wood to do that to. And I'm just hoping I can get my brush in there. And I'm not taking it all down, no way. If this doesn't work, a toothbrush would work. I know this looks like overkill for a camper van shower, but I want this to be waterproof and I don't want to be taking it out in three years time. Now the good news is it doesn't look too pretty, but this is actually behind the two walls of tiles. This is just an extra added security measure to make sure moisture doesn't get into the shower. Oh, something's in. Right, now, before I put this piece in, I'm gonna get excited and take this tape off. Basically, this is one sheet of acrylic routed to make it look like tiles. And I think it's brilliant. Now, I know it's only a camper van, but I still want my tile lines to match up. They're about two millimetres out. Can I live with that? I'm not taking it all out again. I can live with it. It's really annoying though. No, it's just two millimetres out. I need to see from where you're looking. It's fine, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine, right? The cameraman's laughing because he knows this is going to irritate me for ages. 
It's fine. It's a camper van. It's just a camper van. It's fine. It's done. It's fine. This is possibly the most exhilarating feeling in the world. So much better than individual ceramic tiles that are heavy, they crack, you need to grout them. Cam fans travel at 60 miles an hour. Maybe this one 50, but. Is it raised? I've been told I should be. Now the idea is that you then put this frame inside that frame and then fix it from the inside. But as this is a vehicle and it's going to be moving around, I'm going to just place it in those two components and leave it loose in the hope that that little bit of give means my glass won't shatter when I'm doing 60 miles an hour. I don't think it will, it's tempered anyway, but I think a little bit of play in there might just help. Mustn't forget these bad boys. <laughs> Not gonna lie, panicked a bit then. Now I love this black shower, but even if it's really well coated, it's gonna scratch. And these pliers have got a, a coating on, but I'm a bit precious. So I'm gonna use a cloth. There's nothing wrong with being careful, apart from quite often I do take twice as long as I need to doing the job. Now it looks like a shower, but does it operate like a shower? I don't know which way to turn the thing. Oh, oh the wrong way! That way. Yes! That! is a proper shower in a camper van. With actually really good pressure. <laughs> Look at that. Bingo. I'm genuinely pretty chuffed with that. This was one of the early dreams about building the ultimate camper van. It has to have a fully functioning, full size shower. And that works treat. Right, enough of basking in my own glory. Let's make the rest of the van. That's cool. Now I know this floor looks slightly overly complicated and it could have just been putting some timber or laminate down. However, this is the key for my pod system. So my units will lock into this profile and that gives me kind of flexibility to change the layout. So all I need to do now is drop in the inserts that go within these bits of profile and they're going to be an inch of insulation and then on top of that a recycled black rubber floor. You might find in your gym or something like that and that will be insulative for heat and sound and it will be really really durable and it won't swell and contract if it gets wet. So I think that is going to be key to this and matte black will look super cool and it won't mark. Yes. I'm going to go and cut it up and put it in. Perfect! Now about 10 more. Makes quite a nice floor itself. Look at that. 
since I came up with the idea for this van, I've always wanted a matte black rubber floor. It's just impact resistant, it's warm, it's durable, and I think it looks the business. The only problem I've had, as you might have spotted, is that I can only source it in one metre by one metre squares, and the internal space in a camper van is a metre and 50 millimetres. So that's frustrating. I'm going to have to cut a slither there and here and a little bit of the back and then scribe it around the shower. But that will make that absolutely flush. So there's no additional steps, which is why I got the shallow shower tray. So I'm pleased with that. Got to make all of these little bits, drop them in, scribe that round, and then the floor is done. And I can put the cabinets in. That is going to be exciting. That's awesome. I tell you what, considering this is made out of recycled car tyres, it's remarkably easy to cut using just a knife. And the finish is bang on. I'm quite tired laying this floor, but fortunately it's incredibly comfortable. I have a slight confession. As you can see, I uh, purchased the slats from a shop. I could have made them out of pallet wood, but these are actually sprung. And I do want to get a good night's sleep. Look at that, full size double bed and a camper van. Now the only thing I'm lacking is a space to dine. And I've had a thought that this bed is actually about 700 mil from the floor, which is perfect dining table height. So I'm going to design and make a dining table that lives under the bed that you can pull out into the main room, put a couple of stools around it to create a really nice dining space. I think it's possible using this stuff. I've just got to work it out. Right, now that is a good sized dining table and my concept is if I have one of these rails either side of it, this will be attached to the underside of the bed like that and like that and then I've glued, looks rather crude but it works, two of these bits together, that will sit in there in the rails and that means the table will slide forwards and backwards. So you can slide it out, have your dinner, slide it away, boom, big open space again. It works on a workbench, but who knows if it's going to work in the van. How on earth am I going to fit this up there? This is not going to be glamorous, everybody. Got it. Right. This is possibly one of those designs. I should have made this in the workshop. These bolts are not on my side today. Right, that. <gasps> <laughs> Turns out building a camper van is good for your core. It's a good workout. 
Wednesday. Right, now, does it work as a table? Ha ha! Bed mode. Dining mode. Boom. Lessons learned. Pre-prepare everything on your workbench. Don't do it when you're lying on the floor underneath a bed. Big lesson learned. A bow? <laughs> oh! A full size double bed in a camper van. I'll tell you what, the fabric makes such a difference. Until this moment, it felt quite engineery with all the aluminium and the wood, but a little bit of soft furnishings, it feels like home. Shame about the view. I'm at my workshop. I could really do with a beach or some mountains, but this really works. I should probably now build the kitchen, put all the pods in, get that finished, and then it's just time for a road trip. Whoa, where first? Bingo! She's on. Locked and loaded. In. That was good actually. And accidentally, I'm prepared to admit I've left a little cavity here for the curtains. That looks deliberate, it's not. That's a happy accident. That's where the bed frame is, but it works. Ah. I need different arms. This bioethanol pod is definitely my favorite. It's eco-friendly, it's gonna give me a lovely naked flame, toasting marshmallows, it's gonna warm the van, and there's no need for a flu. I love this one. Beer fridge, done. Tell you what, I've built myself a camper van. It's been so much more work than I ever imagined. When I picked up the ambulance, I thought about keeping in some of the cabinets, but it was just so grotty, I had to gut the entire thing, and that has taken a lot of time. And about halfway through, I did think I've bitten off more than I can chew, but now, stood here for the first time with all the cabinets in place, the full-size double bed, the LED lighting, a full-size quadrant shower, solar panels, fridge, hobs, sink, storage, wardrobes, a huge garage underneath for paddle boards and push bikes and stuff. I am so happy I persisted. It was really, really tough. And it's actually lent itself perfectly. The ambulance shape and proportions and size, because it's so boxy, is just crying out for a camper van conversion the curtains, the fabrics, that really softens it because it did feel a little bit too engineered to start with, but the tones, the textures, the brightness, the lightness, the sun streaming in through the skylight, I couldn't be happier. I just really now need to go and test it out. I want to go exploring and roaming and testing it. It's actually really genuinely quite emotional because it has been hard. And it's been a tough time for everybody as well, so to have something positive come out of it is actually really rather nice. And I can now go exploring, I can go and watch my rugby and stay in this, I can go paddleboarding and surfing and all those things I like to do in the knowledge that I'm returning to something that I built with my own hands for not a lot of money, 
during lockdown. That's a negative time turned into a positive. Look at it, it's brilliant. I'm properly proud and I don't care about shouting about it. Let's go exploring.